Hey everyone, and welcome to June 22nd edition of the Chaos Community Weekly Hangout slash meeting. Um, we have dropped the minutes in the chat. We'll do that again. If you would be so kind as to add your name and how you're doing, because we would really love to know how things are going for you. So if you want to do that, awesome. If you don't, that's also totally fine. And just to reiterate, we try to say this every time. Sometimes I forget, but it's completely fine if you leave your camera off, if you want it on, whatever you want to do is absolutely 100% fine with us. Um, and we, if you don't want your camera on, but you do want to interact, um, you're welcome to interact in the chat. Where we try to integrate that into um, the meeting as much as we possibly can. So feel free to just chat if you would rather do that as well. Um, Cause we do record these meetings or post them on YouTube. And you know, some people would rather not have like their whole world on YouTube, but um, I don't care. So it's fine for me, whatever. Anyway, there's the, there's the minutes uh, one more time, just in case. Um, and we will go ahead and get started because we have a lot to talk about today, it looks like. So that is awesome. And just as a reminder, we try to cut these a little bit short uh, during this time because we are planning Chaos Con at the same time. So we've been using the tail end of these meetings to plan Chaos Con. So uh, we'll get right into it. So the first one is, um, we just wanted to mention some updates from our Asia Pacific community. Um, we do have those meetings bi-weekly um, every other Wednesday, Wednesday I think. Uh, and um, it's, it's primarily our Chinese community that comes to those meetings, not entirely, but um, that is a large percentage of our community. So um, we've had some, some barriers to participation from them and it's, it's been a little bit difficult, but uh, we're, we're trying to be better, um, to be more inclusive for that community. Um, the things we struggle with mostly are, of course, language barriers, um, but we also struggle with time zones and the tools that they have access to. So those are kind of our three um, big chunks of, of barriers that we're trying to, to chip away at and make it a little bit easier for them to participate. So um, just a few updates. Uh, we've kind of empowered them to hold their own community type meetings um, where they're going to be uh, developing some, some uh, metrics and, and really digging into the need of metrics. Um, so it's a little more like a working group, I guess. Um, um, that way they can use the tools that they can access and they can do it at a time that's friendly for them and, um, and obviously in their language as well. So uh, there's a core team of us uh, that will be kind of the bridge between what they're working on and what we're, we're working on in this side of the world. Um, so um, the, the goal is not to duplicate efforts, but to just kind of empower them to work in the best way that makes sense for them. Because they are extremely interested in, in helping us develop metrics for the greater good. So, um, so that's going on there. Um, and then the second thing is we have created a, uh, a Slack channel, in case you missed that announcement, that is uh, for our Chinese speakers. So if you look on Slack and you see a Slack channel that's named in Chinese. It stands for Chinese community. And a big shout out to Shoya and Yuhoi for um, kind of moderating that channel for us and for creating it and just being really instrumental in making that happen. So that's that. And then the third thing is that they are hosting a uh, meetup on July 8th in Beijing. They've done one in, I think, Shanghai in December. And so this is the second chaos meetup that they're doing. Um, and they, uh, again, you know, it's been Shoya and King and Yuhoi who are, are just absolutely wonderful and have been kind of pushing this forward. So, um, so yeah, they're going to repurpose some of the content that we, we recorded for them and provided to them um, the last meetup. And then they've added some new stuff as well. So those are kind of um, the, the areas we wanted to bring up. We're also, um, they've been super instrumental in helping with translations. Um, and getting those, uh, getting the process working um, and, and getting some updates to our metrics translated and, and things like that. So that was a lot, that was a lot of me talking. Who has questions about what's going on over there? Uh, right now uh, in our, on our participate page on the website, we, we provide uh, kind of two time zones we, we provide a, a United States time zone and a European time zone. Uh, I, there's, a, there's an issue open in the website repo to, uh, to add a Chinese time zone to that as well. 
because uh, it'll it'll be a little bit easier for them to uh, uh, locate the meetings that way. But I, I had I do have an uh, an open question in that uh, in that issue, and that is which what time zone is appropriate for that? China actually only has one time zone, despite being a massively wide country. Okay. When when I looked online, I saw there were two. It was Beijing Standard Time, and then uh, another one. It's Beijing Standard Time. Beijing Standard Time is the is yeah. the okay. Thank you. I have a vague recollection. I have a vague recollection. We, at one point, we discussed including just UTC, but did I imagine that? UTC is problematic because um, it doesn't shift for daylight savings. Oh, okay. So it it, it ends right. up being okay. a different time on your calendar for half of the year. So that's actually yeah. actually one of the problems we're having right now with the the, okay. the Chinese community is having trouble uh, with the time zone difference because of daylight savings time. So prior they they weren't having any. Yeah. Uh, but there's that, that probably something weird now. Yeah. Yeah, that probably explains why nobody showed up the meeting before last. I have a question. Hi, this is Lucas. Um, is there a link to a uh, event or an invitation, something that I can share out with Chinese colleagues? For the July 8th meetup? Correct. Yes. That so is there's... an excellent question, and I don't know the answer to that. Um, I know that they were working on it. I don't know if Shoya uh, completed that. Matt, do you know? Or Kevin? I think I'll think i just put it in the Slack right now. I'll just ping Shoya. Um, okay. It is, this is actually the first time hearing about it. Uh, so there's okay. no, there is no, there won't, there isn't a website presence for it currently. So. Okay. I think Shoya was going to do a PR for that. So um, she may not have gotten a chance to do that yet. We don't have a PR yet on the website. Okay. We'll check with her on that as well. Thank you. Once we have that, we will um, probably post it to the chaos mailing list just to, to let every anyone know. And then if you want to grab that from there, uh, Lucas, if you're on the, I don't know if you're subscribed to the mailing list, but if you are, you can maybe grab it from there. Oh, it'll probably end up in Slack too, I would imagine somewhere. Okay, any other questions about what's happening with our Chinese community? Just a few comments. One was based on the meeting, for those of you that attend, maybe I'm alone in this, but like I was, I'm absolutely stunned by the amount of work that's going on in China by the community to talk about chaos metrics, to talk about where chaos metrics are informing business practices. Um, I mean the the meetup, the agenda that was shared in the last in the last meeting. I mean, these are members from all sorts of different organizations who are talking about how to use chaos metrics and how to contribute to the community. So I, I was just I was kind of stunned, to be honest with you, in a very positive way. And so, um, and then kind of the connection between, you know, our Chinese friends and 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 us in the US and in Europe, like there's a desire on both on both ends to get this to work. So, and that's really positive as well. So I, I just thought that was really cool. I just like to point that out. Um, yeah, it's, they've been great. Yeah, very supportive. Um, and then I just would like to point out too that we talked with uh, Ritik and Yash on Monday, just with respect to the translations. And over the course of Google Summer of Code, they're primarily going to work on the metrics release, the English version metrics release to help automate that process. And they've already been doing a ton of work in that regard. Thanks for Tick and thanks, Yash. Um, but to also think about what a social and technical process could look like to assist in the translation of metrics. So not necessarily, I don't think a deployment will come out of Google Summer of Code, but just maybe thinking through what that process could be um, and serve as a kind of a platform for moving forward. 
And then there is a, That's great. a um, this is for you too. There's a, <laughs> there's a big pull request right now in the minutes in the risk working group that is the translation of all risk metrics to Chinese. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. I, I, I'm assuming that somebody who speaks Chinese will validate that. Because I, I don't think I will be, or any other member of the risk working group will be terribly useful at knowing if the translations are any good. No, I think typically Shoya can, I think Shoya can help step in. At least that's how it's kind of worked in the past. So, okay. Just a note that we have kind of the risk, risk metrics translated and like that. Should we, should we um, just, the Shoya know they can simply merge that or? Oh, yeah, I'll tag her in the PR to maybe. Okay. So Matt, yeah. I actually have a question about that. Um, I thought we had paid a company to translate those. Did we not do that? We, we did. And so I don't know if he did any full translations or if he was just kind of validating some, because he's working in the translations repo. So I'm guessing he's validating a lot of the work that we did. So. Okay. I just want to clarify for my brain. So thank you. Uh, any other questions about anything? Rock on. We'll move ahead then. If you do have a question, just drop it in chat and we'll come back to it. No big, no big deal. Uh, okay, so the idea, the next uh, item on the agenda is posting of meeting transcripts um, from the, the YouTube recordings that we have. Um, we, the idea was brought to us that maybe we should be posting these transcripts somewhere. Um, right now we kind of rely on the YouTube um, transcription service, which is well, not perfect, but it's pretty good, it's pretty good. So um, the question is, do we need the transcripts? And if so, should, where should we post those? What do you all think? So I swear that we used to post them. I think when I was doing, remember when we would run all the Zoom meetings through UNO and I would have access, mm -hmm. our link was UNO, not chaos or whatever it is. Um, right, yeah. I think I would put it like in the description of the video. So I would download the TXT file and then just add it to the description or like in the that description box. I make, never have done that. <laughs> and I'm the one that posts them to YouTube. So that's my fault. I didn't I didn't realize I should well, be doing that. I'm sorry. No, I, no, no. Because when we automated the process, it made everything so much easier, right? Because the recordings well, just kind of auto post now. No, they don't. Because we oh. don't have that that permission um, mm -hmm. from the, the Zoom account that we have from the LF. So I still automatic, or I still put them up there manually. Am I supposed to be doing that? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I've been doing them, but well, that's also why there's a lag. There's sometimes like a, a few day lag in the time of the meeting and when it gets posted, because I just get behind. So um, I will add that to the list of things when I post a meeting, I will download that transcription and put that in there. Well, I will put that on my list of things to do, which is to reach out to the Linux Foundation and see if we can't get that auto post service. I don't know what that might be, but yeah, it was a limitation of yeah. So, so I think um, might... when this auto post conversation first came up, it was a conversation about getting if if I remember correctly, it's about getting something like captions or live transcript, not live, but you know something that you can read that says what people are saying. Um, I still think that's valuable. It's 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 good to have that, even though we have the transcript in the description. It might be another conversation though. I think Google provides the auto transcription when you upload it on the YouTube. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if uh, like if anyone wants anyone wants to watch that transcription, they just have to put on the like there's a button they switch on the transcription and they'll see the transcription which Google, uh, YouTube does it by itself. Let's just use that then. If you can just download the transcription, because I know Google, as you were saying, Elizabeth, does the, the captioning for the video. If we can just download that captioning. 
yes even the youtube has this option to download the transcript like uh, it is doing auto transcription and you can download that with the timer and everything from the youtube please so it would be more of educating people on how to do that than providing that is that Ye yes okay Oh okay. well, yeah, I see. If you um, it's on the video. It's on the page for each video. You can just click and say "Open Transcript," and it shows up like a chat box. It's really cool. Yes, that is correct. Awesome. Okay. So we'll add that maybe to our participate page. Um, not to add more things to that page since <laughs> it's already gigantic, but um, yeah, I think that would be helpful because I yeah. didn't realize that that was something that could be done. So no, you don't need to add a separate transcript from the Zoom to the YouTube. And will be done by the YouTube. Right. I just was going to maybe point people to that. So just in case they're looking for that. Awesome. Any other thoughts on this before we move on? Nope. I see shaking of heads. Awesome. All right. We're going to go forward then. Uh, quick updates on the Google Summer of Code. We have um, MARS is the project that Ritik and Yash have been working on, stands for Metrics Auto Automated Release System. Is that right? Awesome. OK. Um, and Ritik has put together a nice logo, which is in our minutes. And it's lovely. And I'm so excited that we have that. Uh, do you all want to talk a brief minute about what's going on in that project? Yeah, in the project for now, we just have a basic readme structure, but in the coming days, we would be pushing the code. I think Yash would be doing that this week. Also this week, we would be mostly focusing on the standardization of the working groups. So we would be attending the work group meetings and discussing like uh, standardization of the readme and the focus area readmes as well. So basically we are at the stage that we are able to generate a skeleton report automatically. And this week we'll be looking to do some process improvements. And that it's some great progress. So exciting for everyone who works on any metrics at all in chaos, it will make your, our lives all better. So your work is fantastic. We really appreciate you, Ritik and Yash. Amazing, amazing stuff. I don't see, oh, does anybody have questions for them before we move along? Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Isaac, have you introduced yourself to the group yet? Uh, I think only like very, very briefly a while ago. Um, Sorry, okay. I've been having like internet connection uh, problems. I've been dropping in and out of this call, but it looks like it's it's a uh, it's all right uh, right now. So, so Isaac's a new Augur developer, and he's right now working on. He just finished uh, making our Docker installation super easy, and now he's working on refactoring some of our um, general worker methods um, to be easier to understand, read, troubleshoot, etc. So pretty, pretty happy about that. Dhruv has made great progress in the Google Summer of Code program. You see his blog post there, uh, getting dependency analysis using, um, what's the tool's name? Is it Scorecard? Scorecard, yes. Getting the OSS Scorecard data uh, into Augur for all of the <clears throat> projects. And uh, Anuj has uh, already got an early version of a PyPy distribution of Augur. So by the end of the summer, you'll be able to pip install big parts of Augur uh, and pieces of it. So you won't have to employ all the workers. And uh, ya Yaming is focused on um, uh, really taking a, taking a look at how people uh, or interconnected uh, in, uh, as contributors across projects on some of the major CNCF work. And then we'll translate that uh, for all repos in Augur. So we're pretty excited about, uh, about the work that they're doing. A lot of it focused on understanding dependencies and risks. Cool. 
Cool. That's fantastic. Hi. And welcome, Isaac. Sorry, Matt, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just going to welcome Isaac. So glad you're here. Thanks for being here. Yeah, no problem at all. I, I really like Rick and Auger. You didn't interrupt me, Elizabeth. I think we talked at the exact same time. So <laughs> I didn't like some sort of collision. Um, Sean, how many people are working on Auger? So, uh, so right now, uh, we have three, three full time folks. Uh, uh, John, uh, Isaac, and Aaron, uh, Aaron, no, Andrew, right? Andrew? Andrew Rain. Uh, Andrew is focused on uh, building a, a Garrett worker so we can analyze Garrett change requests right now. And John is uh, building a new front end for Augur. Uh, that'll be simpler and easier to use. I also have uh, eight students who are working on our software engineering processes and hardening some of our tests and things like that. Those are those are students taking research credits with me. Um, that they came to me largely because none of our other faculty are willing to work in the summer, and many of our students uh, are short credits after the pandemic. So we win. <laughs> Somebody could mute Sophie. Yes. They're just doing their dishes. <laughs> Multitasking. Okay, that's okay, Sophia, we love you. <laughs> no worries at all. Um, any other questions for Sean or the Augur team before we go on? I don't have any questions, but I'll share the updates from Remote Lab GSOC. So we have one student who's, who was working on the sorting hat. Uh, she is uh, Rashmi. Uh, she couldn't call, join the call today. So I'll share her updates on behalf of her. So uh, these two weeks, we were uh, mainly focusing on the designing the project. I mean, how are we going to implement uh, the uh, data models in the sorting hat. So we were mostly discussing, you know, uh, talking how, what are the pros, what are the cons of the design. And then we five, we have finally come to a conclusion. So from here on, uh, we'll be actually working on uh, the code and uh, reviewing patches and everything. So yeah, that's it. Fantastic. Any other comments about GSOC updates? I just want to make a quick statement that uh, I think Drew and Yeming both had created their very first blog posts ever for this project for, for Google Summer of Code. And like amazing. I think my, my, my first blog post was like <laughs> not not good. It was not good. But these um, these posts are amazing. So you should really uh, they get extra awesome points just because they've never done it before. And it's an incredibly terrifying thing to post a blog post for your very first time. So great job to both of you. They were they were really great. Really good work. Um, okay, let's move on to ChaosCon sponsorship documents. Says any updates we have interest. I'm not sure who put this in, but yeah, I put I put that in. I can talk a little bit about it. Um, I had someone approach me and say, "Hey, how's the ChaosCon stuff going so far? I uh, might be interested in sponsoring. Do you have your perspectives available?" Um, and because I talked a little bit about the sponsorship, getting kind of we're gearing up to get that going. So I just wanted to check in on, like, do we have that available to the public yet, or anything like that? No, but I will. <laughs> now I certainly will. <laughs> and maybe we should talk to that because I can. I nice know who that was. And you don't have to. Put I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll stick around for the yeah. chaos meeting um, or the chaos con planning meeting as always. Yeah, right but the formatted document is available on the GitHub uh, governance document. I'm not sure about the amount there or anything, but the template is there in the governance. Yeah, sent it to me like right before this call. So. 
I'll take a look at it. Okay. Moving on quickly, uh, we have um, chaos office hours on Mondays. If uh, anyone would like to sign up to be a host for those, super low traffic. I've done them twice and had no people come in yet. Well, <laughs> Venu came in and kept me company for a little bit. So thanks, Venu. Uh, but yeah, so it's really low traffic. Uh, basically, all you have to do is just be available in case someone comes in and has questions. Um, so if you would like to sign up for that, that would be awesome. If it works with your time zone, I know that it's a little trickier for, for some uh, to, to participate, but uh, the, the link is in the minutes and um, we would really appreciate that. If you have signed up and have not gotten a calendar invite from moi, let me know and I will send you one. That's mostly to you, Vinod and Sophia and uh, I forget. Hello. And Elizabeth, I got your invite and it got canceled again, but I have marked it in my calendar. So. Okay, I will send you another one. It's because I, I screwed it all up. So that was my fault. <laughs> that was my fault. Uh, I had a system and the system did not work. So I tried, to, I tried to make a new system, but I was afraid that was going to happen. So I can send you a new invite. Mm. Okay, thanks. Uh, but yes, yeah, so, so mine, yeah, mine is fine. So thanks. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Um, but yeah, sign up if you want and let me know if you have questions about that or you're not sure how to do it. I will be more than happy to help you figure it out. Um, the next one on the list is the Slack channel creation policy, which Sean actually did. Awesome. Thank you, Sean. Even though we yeah, are on vacation, I did. you still got it done. Sorry about that. Well, I'd have done, I had it done last week, but I wasn't going to be on the call. And so I, I knew I couldn't be held accountable when I wasn't okay. there. So I just delayed it a week. Is there a link to that uh, documentation somewhere that we can just look at somewhere? The, the yeah, there's an open pull request, pull request number twenty under the community handbook, um, and if you look at the files that are changed, you can see them. I I think I did a little bit more than was requested. I did put in the statements about our general channel creation policies and whatnot, but I also added a section for newcomers. Um, just kind of like a welcome explaining that we have Slack, we have office hours, and we have workshops that we hold periodically that are in the newsletter, which also refers them to the mailing list. So I just, you know, I tried to, I thought it would be helpful to just have a newcomers, hey, here's where to start thing at the top. Excellent idea. Oh, and Matt, uh, can't you put a link to that in the chat here on Zoom. So if anyone wants to look at that, have a gander, there you go. That's where you find it. Yeah. I'm certainly happy to make any changes that people request. Thanks a lot for doing that, Sean. Really appreciate that. Pleasure. Any questions about that from anyone? Okay, uh, we have a couple more things to talk about, um, if that's okay with the Chaos Con Planning Committee. Is that cool if we just burn through these real quick? Even though it's 12.30 or 11.30, whatever time, wherever you are. Okay, so Half we're gonna do yeah, we're in most places. Half past, yeah. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is the inconsistency in Working group common focus areas goal as part of the standardization yeah. of the working groups. Someone Actually, want to I that? put this point in the document. So this was regarding the inconsistency in the work group common focus area goals. So if you go to both the links, you will see uh, once again. So let's say we talk of what focus area. It says that identify what contributions were made. While if you go inside the what focus area, the goal is different. So we were thinking if this inconsistency could be resolved because this is the readme from which we are extracting the goal of the focus area for our mass project. And this is also the part of the standardization process. What is, what is the inconsistency? I'm, I'm looking at both and I'm trying to figure it out. Is it just that it's what, when, where, and who? 
No, actually, the, the goal rules. is different. Oh, okay. All right, I see. Okay. So under what what is stated in the box is different than what is if I click what. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's different in website as well, I think. That would make sense since the site pulls directly from here. So what is there a proposed resolution retake or? Uh, the proposal is that we arrive at a common goal, which I would be happy to replicate on the on this working group. So which one should we use the outside one or the which we have in the inside? I think the ones I mean, Don, Don might remember better, uh, surely remembers better than me, but the one at the focus areas level looks more like the one that we refined. The one that is in the individual focus areas? No, the one that's in the general focus areas page. Okay. So those, I mean, I, Don, tell me if you think I'm wrong. I don't remember. Yeah. Um, I think the the common working group does have that on the agenda to uh, reflect on our uh, focus areas. So perhaps we can uh, address address this issue in in the next meeting. And we have a meeting on Thursday. So if you want to come talk about this, now's your chance. Boom, done. All right, deferred until Thursday. Yeah, uh, maybe we could just post it when we decide, talk through it, just post an issue and we can tag you or tick. Just for like yeah, a- Yeah, that Okay. Awesome. Um, so the next item and last item on the agenda is the DEI Council. And I'm guessing Matt G wants to talk about this. He did. So this is something that has come up in our self-reflection the chaos DEI self-reflection, and it even came up in the chaos uh, DEI working group last week, I think. Yes, it did. Um, and this is it's just a proposal to have a group of individuals in the chaos community serve as a DEI council. And this is just a group of people who continue to reflect on the project internally as ways that we can continue to improve or center DEI within our own project. So as you know, a lot of the DEI working group efforts are around the development of metrics that could be used not only by the chaos project, but by other projects as well. Um, but just a, people's thoughts and reaction, this is, I'd love to get feedback about a group of individuals who would meet on a twice a year basis, um, could serve as the point of con uh, contact for code of conduct concerns, like we, we kind of centralize this work and just have a group of people that continues to reflect on, on how we continue to center DEI in our own project. That's it. I think they would also maybe run periodic surveys just to take a look at the community and see how we're doing with regards to DEI practices and policies and things like that. So um, I think that that's another uh, piece that nobody is really dedicated to doing. Like it's not really the board of directors that would do that. So, um, but yeah, if anyone who has, who has questions or comments or thoughts about this. I think it's a great idea. And one thing that since we started chaos, we haven't done is uh, elect the code of conduct response team. I think we are still the same three people that we started with. I think so. Like probably. Probably time to review that. <clears throat> maybe elect new members if anyone wants to step up to do it. So yeah, I think I the DI Council can help with that process. I, I like the idea primarily because it can provide a model for other projects who want to advance DEI. Um, you know, we get to experiment and then they get to 
copy us, and that's good. Would this council be uh, by appointment, uh, by volunteer, uh, by election? I'm not sure. It would be an all male panel. He's kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding, yes. This... <laughs> I need to file a complaint. Uh, yeah, uh, it's fair. Just hadn't thought through that, Kevin, yet, just in terms of the process of putting together the council. Any other thoughts or comments about that before we send you all on your merry little ways? Um, yes, uh, this is Lucas. I have one thought on that. Um, in a group that I participate in, um, the uh, group was, um, it was a racial justice group that was um, mainly white people. And um, we kind of worked on how to broaden that. And um, the most successful project was just to define um, a separate group that united people, uh, you know, people of color, where that was kind of in the charter. Um, generally kind of white men sort of just tend to man, man spread over conversations. It's kind of, I don't know, it's just the bad thing about us, but everybody's used to it and kind of puts up with it. So defining a, um, a group that was sort of not for white men specifically in the charter um, might help uh, break this impasse and recruit people. That's good. Oh, thank you. Yeah, would, uh, that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah, thanks for, the, for that idea, Lucas. That's really helpful. I wonder, thank you. So um, apart from just talking, what, what could I do to help make that happen? Well, if there are examples of communities that have done this, that would be great. Um, Christy, who's on the team that's helping us reflect on our own DEI practices, says um, she had pointed to the Ganon Project has done this in the past as well. So maybe just a few examples would be a great place to start. How would I sync up with you to do that? Put them in the minutes. That's it. Thank you, everybody. All right. Um, thanks again for everyone coming. We love to see you here. So we will see you here same time, same place next week. And um, Chaos Con planning people, hang around for a little bit. Everyone else, later. Bye. And Sean, you can stop the recording too. <laughs>